I'm going to do a short uh, intro to what Photoshop is. Photoshop is part of the Adobe Creative Cloud. Uh, there is no option for you to get Photoshop by itself, as far as I know. I usually, I used to be able to do that, but that was way back a bit, a, like, like 20 years ago. Uh, you used to be able to do Photoshop, Illustrator uh, individually, but not anymore. All right, so I have the Creative Cloud open here for you to view it. Now, the Creative Cloud comes with a bunch of different products. So like one, two, three, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That will be 20, 30, 33 programs uh, that I can see in this window. These are considered apps. So Photoshop is part of it. Photoshop is a subscription base. I get it for free because uh, my company that I work for, Proximity Learning, uh, pays for it. But I used to pay for it but because I'm a teacher. Any teacher and any student can get it for like $19, $19.99, like 20 bucks. It's worth it because look at this. Yeah. 30 different programs again. So that is not even a dollar each. So it's good. Now, when you first click on, I mean, before you even come to the Creative Cloud, you have to log in. So like right now, it has my name right there. I'm logged in. So it recognizes me. As a matter of fact, when I first log in, it just says, hello, you know, Jonathan. And it says my name. In this video, I'm going to be going over Photoshop and Illustrator. There will be uh, like a very large video if I was going over all of these 30 different programs. In this class, we're just going to be going over Photoshop, Illustrator, and maybe, maybe uh, InDesign. Now, notice that I have several different versions over here. Like I have InDesign 19.1 and I also have InDesign 18.5. Now. You can do this when you have the Adobe Creative Cloud. You can have multiple versions of Photoshop. Uh, as a matter of fact, a few months ago, uh, my Photoshop stopped working because the new version was not really, uh, I guess, compatible with my computer or did not want to work. So it stopped working. So what I did is I went back, but I, I fixed it. So now I only have one Photoshop. When you click on Photoshop, it launches right here. This is how it launches. It launches into the interface, but I'm gonna go to the homepage. If you have, if you don't have any work, you can see there is a bunch of work over here that I, I have been doing. If you don't have any work in here at all, it's because you haven't opened Photoshop at all. So I can access them because I worked them before if I haven't moved them. So if I haven't moved them, I'm gonna click on this one. And you're gonna see what happens. I moved that one. Oh, never mind. Uh, it's there. So because the computer knows where it's at and what I work, then it will just open it. You don't even have to click open. Now, if you don't have any work because you never used Photoshop before, there is a way, there, there are several different ways for you to open uh, Photoshop. You can go new file if you're going to create something new that you've never done before you can also go over here to the open button and select a file that you have in your computer that you want to uh, kind of work with you can also go file open we're going to talk more about the interface in just a few minutes now in order for you to see the the actual Photoshop interface, you have to have a file open. Right now, we are in what's called the home screen. And then notice that right now, home is highlighted. If you don't have any files and you haven't opened any files, then this will be completely black. Since I'm always kind of working in Photoshop and uh, we're gonna talk about Illustrator uh, in the next video, this is what happens if you try to open something that is not in the same location, it's gonna give you this message. File cannot be opened because it was moved or deleted. So like some of these files that I have that I, they say here a year ago, a year ago, uh, it's because I moved them to another location. So they, once you click on it, it will disappear from your home screen. So this is what it's doing right now. So all of these that say a year ago, a year ago, 
I was teaching a cl another class, and uh, so they're no longer in the folder that I had them before. Now, this is the one that I opened about three minutes ago. Now, what if you have a file that is on your on your desktop and you want to open it? Then you grab it. You know, right now I have some. I, I've been working on a project that the students is, are working on uh, to create a poster. So I'm grabbing it and I'm going to put it here and Photoshop will open it. Right? So this is a, a poster that the students are making like this week and it's about Celia Cruz, a singer, Cuban singer from uh, Cuba. Obviously there was a United States citizen because she you know fled cuba and this is a saying for her so notice it now instead of being in the home page notice that the home page is over there now i'm in basically the photoshop interface all right so the photoshop interface once you open a file it will show up right here on the layers i'm going to talk about these later so let me close them make them smaller normally when you want to make a window smaller you find the in-between section, see like right there, it should be making it so. I have this file open over here. It had a lock. That, that means if I want to work on it, I have to unlock it. We're going to talk more about that. All right, so we're not going to make any changes. So no. Now notice, because I just opened that one, it's showing on my home screen. Now notice also what happened. Because I closed it, the Photoshop interface shut down by Photoshop is still open but i'm back on to this section that is called the home page so i want you to understand how this works so i'm going to open this one so notice that I, I was trying to do something over here this is a something that i, I just opened right now now right now this is open at a hundred percent this is a file that i i just put over here i i really don't want to work on it because if that's a hundred percent that's not good now I can make it bigger, right? So now is a 200%, which is still fine. But notice how this file is not meant to be like open at 200% because it gets fuzzy. That we're gonna talk about those things as we progress into the course. Right here, and this what's called the work space tells me what kind of a file I have open, right? This is a 427 pixels by 362 pixels. Is that 120 PPI points per inch. Now I can change this. I can do all kinds of different things to this, but we're not gonna get into that in this video. This video, I just wanna give you an introduction to what, you know, what's the interface. All right, so this is the interface. We're not in the home screen anymore. If I wanna go to the home screen, I just click on that. If I want to go back to Photoshop, I can click on that arrow. So easy to go from one screen to the next screen. Now, I have a lot of different items here. Uh, since in this class, I'm treating this as a beginner's class, I am going to go over uh, pretty much a lot of the things that we have here. You know, all of these are considered tools, Photoshop tools. Uh, so like right now, if I, if I hover on top of it, I have a move tool there. If I go to the second one, this is called a rectangular marquee tool. So all of these guys over here are considered tools. So on the left side, I have my tool right here on the top. As we already saw, we have some different items. I like, we have the section that is called file. And then remember, even when I was not here, I can access this and I can say file open. So there is a bunch of different things in here. Uh, I'm not going to go over these. And the next video that I'm going to go into more detail, different sections, I will go over in more detail uh, on these. So we have all this section over here. We have, these are not tools. These are like uh, multiple tabs. They have multiple uses, so you have the file uh, that you can open a file, you can close a file, you can save a file, you can copy a file, you can do 
all kinds of different things in here because this is a beginner's course i'm not going to go over every single one of the items that we have in here we're just going to cover was uh just beginners you know kind of video all right then we have the edit so like if i want to edit this this picture that i have here i can do certain things now when you are in this tab if something is grayed out that means you haven't done or you haven't used whatever that is. Like if I try to do uh, like something like that, let me see, is it gonna register? No, because I'm not using a brush. So let me get a brush. All right, so I just did something. Now, remember it was grayed out? Now I can undo what I just did. If you did it one time and let your mouse go, that is considered one undo. So if I go in there and I select this and I go, all right, one, two, three, or five. Now I have five undos. One, two, three, four, and five. So once something goes great, that means you haven't used it, so obviously you cannot undo. Now I think uh, Photoshop can go back up to like 20 or 30 times. Now you don't want to do that. You don't want to wait until 30 strokes later, but maybe you forgot and then problem is when you do that you're deleting everything that you have done between the 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 item that you're working on and that item that you want to go back so you don't want to do that uh, now when you're working on a file like working on this file like i just pretended that i was doing that you might want to do something like save you should save now i think Photoshop art automatically saves nowadays, you know, because it didn't used to in the past. So, but never, 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 never rely on a software to actually do your saving. Never do that because you don't know unless you investigate how often does it save. Like I have another program that it saves every like five minutes. Now, right here in Photoshop in five minutes, I would have just done a ton of work in five minutes so i don't want to wait that my suggestion is whenever you're working on any type of file in photoshop and also an illustrator then what you could do is uh save like every 20 seconds or any any time you are done like like three or four things in that file that you're working on that picture whatever whatever it is that you're working on so like it could be 20 seconds it could be 30 seconds it can be a minute don't go too long without saving because you will regret it <laughs> uh, i'm i'm happy uh the programs you know especially nowadays pretty much almost all programs that i know and that i use they do an auto save and that has saved me a lot like i have a U universal power system that if my power goes off, I'm glad and I'm happy that my, you know, whatever I'm working on is still working on. That saves, saves you a lot. All right, so I'm not gonna go over the rest of the other ones here. I'm gonna cover them later. So let's come over here to the right side. Oh, before I do that, whenever you are working on something like here, and then you have a tool on like, I have the brush. Notice what's gonna happen over here to these guys over here. If I click on my brush, notice that this, this is a kind of like a toolbar. So you have this, these are the tools. So this is a brush tool that I was using to demonstrate what I was doing before. And as soon as I clicked on it up here, right below this set of different, um, I would say drop down menus right below that that one shut up if I go to the eraser tool same thing happens if I go to my brush tool same thing happens so so when you're working with your tools know that up here you have a lot more options so like right now uh, this tool that I was using is a tool that I that I do the changes size so like if I want, like I want to erase just what I just did that, instead of erasing it, maybe I don't want to erase the whole thing. Then I just go in there and I like this tool 
because it has a pointed, you know, it's pointed in different directions. Now, when you're working with a tool like this, this is something that I learned from a guy that I, we might uh, see some of his videos in here in this class. Uh, he just, like many years ago, he showed me this trick. When you have a brush and you want to turn the brush around without moving anything, use your arrow key. Like, let's say, for example, I want to use this pointy area so I can delete this. So notice that it was, I, this was clicked. Current tool only is the one that I am currently using. But I have used many different things. Like right now, I was showing you like clicking on different kinds of things. So, so this is the one that I, the, the one that I was showing you before is the one that allows. Now, so notice that if I want to erase this, it will be much easier if it's pointing like it allows me to go in deeper like i wanted to be make it bigger so notice that if i try to this tool right there in that position is not very good for erasing what i want to erase there now obviously i could go back in there and like be very careful and i erase this you know i can carefully do that or i can just go all right let's go to the pointed area and then I can just go in there. Now, obviously, if I really want to go really in deep in there, like this is usually uh, erasing like this way. It's not usually a beginner kind of task, but so I have this, I kind of like this one because I have several different pointy kind of different surfaces. Uh, so it's my preference. Now, it's possible that I probably got that from some other location. Now, you need to investigate what you have here in Photoshop to see if you need to import, you know, things from a different location. If you do that, you know, I'm going to be showing you how to do that. How do you import it? How do you put it in there? All right. So, so that's just a little bit about how these things works and how we like the different locations. Once we go into exploring more of these tools, then you, we're going to see more things up here like right now i'm in the move tool if you hover and top on top of the tools you will see what the name of it and you're actually going to see a video and the next video i'm going to be you know kind of showing you some of these videos but you can watch them uh, as your leisure but i'm going to be showing that a little bit of the tools a little bit of this kind of toolbar that shows up whenever you click on a tool and a little bit of the drop uh, menu that we have, you know, the, the ones that we have out there. We're going to be talking more about those when we start di really digging into them. On the right side over here, we have several different windows. I can, now I can close it. I don't want to close it right now because I, I want to talk about them yet. So I can close this tab group. Like, let's say I don't want to touch it. I don't want to, I don't want to use, I'm not going to use it. Then I'm going to, you know eliminate it now when you have a toolbar and i mean when you have a these over here i'm not called toolbar these section over here are called panels whenever i have a panel open i can also make it bigger smaller now you need to make sure that you see the the this so like you see this is the mouse it's like a triangle when you want to deal with the size of this and adjust it, you can see that it's going, the arrow, it has an arrow pointing up and down. That means you can go up and down. Uh, right here, I can come and do this if it lets me. Sometimes it doesn't let me. So notice that I can actually do this here too. So you can adjust these the same way. Now you can also do this to this section over here. Anytime you go into a section, you know, if it's adjustable, you can adjust it like that. If it has two little uh, kind of pointed arrows like this, that means you can change the size like that. I don't like it side by side, but I know somebody that I really like the way he works, but he likes him like this. I don't because 
what's the purpose of having all this empty space? But he does. Like, I don't like it. I want my work workspace, this is the workspace, as big as possible because sometimes I work with large pictures. All right, so again, you can adjust them. If you see this two arrow, you can see, you can do that. Notice that I just made that one bigger. And when it stops, that means you cannot make it any bigger anymore, right? So I'm gonna put it back. So I can adjust that one, right? So adjust that one. So we are in the panel section. Now, the panel sections come from a window, I mean, from my drop menu that is called a window. Right here, we have one of the most important things about Photoshop. I can have this workspace in all kinds of different, uh, what's called a range. So yeah, tile all vertically, two vertical, horizontal. So now you need to figure out which one is the one that you like the most. So you have the panels here. What happens if you close this or make it disappear for some reason? Like I'm gonna close this right now. I just deleted or I, I closed it. It really didn't delete it. What it did is close. So I closed the layers. This is called the layers panel. Right there in the layers panel, we have channels and then we have paths. We're gonna talk more about the individual parts of these and how do they you know, how you can use them. Now, right here, I have this window open. So notice that it's open right there, but also in my layers, it's also open right here. If I wanna make it disappear, I can close the eye, or I can just open the eye. Then I have a, a, a another layer there, you can see, this is called a background. So if I can close this one, I can see the background. You can rename them. So this is called landscape, uh, blah, 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 Bali kind of feature. You know, I just grabbed the picture from somewhere to put in there, it doesn't matter. Now, if you click on this, right click on it, you can change the name by going to re uh, rename layer, like right there. Now, sometimes they are clickable. Sometimes you can actually do that. But if you want to rename it, just go right click and just go rename layer. Let's say I want to name this layer one, layer not LA. I, if I want to rename this layer one, then I can just do and just click away and it is done. Now, if I want to do this one, I'm gonna rename this layer two and that's it. All you have to do is just click on, on it, you know, or right click on it. Now notice that when I right click on it, something happened to me. My background, I was like, you touch me. What you want with me? <laughs> now, there are several different things that we have in here. We're not gonna deal with those, not today. Then we have several different things over here. And this panel, we have properties, we have adjustments, we have libraries. Now, obviously here, and this is a beginner's kind of course, I, I'm not gonna be going over all of all of these, but I'm gonna to be touching some of them. All right, so let's go back to the property. So we have quick action, we have some guys, we have rulers, you know, we are not gonna to touch those in this video. And then right there on the top, we have colors, swatches, gradients, patterns. We're gonna be talking more about those. And then you have this other uh, panel here. And here, it's gonna show the what I've done, All right? So these are some things that that I have done. I first open it, and the last thing right now I need name change. So I did two name changes. So notice that they are here. So when you want to go back, I can click. Uh, let me see. Let's click on that one. And when you click on it it will take you to that place. This is why I did a bunch, so you can see that. Uh, so if I click on this one, it's taking me to this, that I changed this layer, you know, the name of it. Or notice that it just went back, right? Went back. If I want to undo that, then I go to edit, 
So notice that I changed it here. I selected it from my history, but because I did not mean to change it or actually change it back. So what I did is I changed it by doing that. So anytime you do an editing, it's right there on your edit tab. Other things uh, will be there that we'll be talking about. Now, notice that right here, I have a brush setting. I haven't touched it, so everything is grayed out. So anytime you have something that is grayed out, means you have not used whatever that feature is. So I have some brushes over here. I actually have uh, hundreds and hundreds of brushes that I have collected through the years. Sometimes Photoshop actually gives you that. So like I have the Photoshop brushes from 2021, Photoshop brushes from 2020. So every time I update Photoshop, I Photoshop. So every time I update Photoshop, I make sure that this remains in here, that nothing is erased. Only the new features are brought in and anything that I have saved in there. So I don't have to be reloading and uploading and you know resaving all kinds of different things that I don't want. Yeah. All right, so if I don't want to deal with this, then I just close it. Uh, I wanted to show this. I plugins, if I have plugins, I don't have, I, I have a pixel squid kind of plugin, but you can have all kinds of different things. Uh, you also have like comments in here. Like if you wanna, let's say you work on something here and this is going to somebody and somebody else is gonna work on it, then you can put a comment over here. I, uh, and then you can explain what you did and then you share that document. So you can share it by email or you can put it in the cloud. Now, that's a little introduction of Photoshop. We will go, uh, we will go into a little bit more deeper uh, into in the next video. But before I do that, so how do you save? Now, saving in Photoshop is not as, I will say, as easy as, as you do in a regular program. There are several different options over here. Now you can click save. This is kind of like the automatic save. Uh, you can save. Now this, when you're doing save here, when you click on, on save here, it saves it to the Photoshop interface with a PSD Photoshop document that only Photoshop can open, I think, I think. I think the other programs can do that. So save, save as. When you click on save as, then you get this option. You get this window. Now I have, because I have the creative cloud, I have one terabyte that I can put in there. Now, when a, a document that I'm working on, it's not completely done then I usually don't save it to the cloud because why would I want to save it? All right, now notice what it says. When it was modified, you can instead of save it to the cloud, I can choose to save it on my computer. That's usually what I do when I'm working on a program. I don't want to try to figure out where is it at. It, it will be on my desktop, on my computer, or in a special folder on my desktop and my computer. And you click save. Now, notice that it did not give me an option to save it as something. You know, I cannot pick. Now, it's giving me a name because that's what I call this, you know, this document that I had in there. Now, you can take it away and save it as something else. Right? And then you click save. So, that is one option that you have. Actually, second option you have. Save as. Now you can save it as a copy, go to this window, and now it's gonna say copy. Again, you can save it to the cloud, you know, if you have a, the Adobe Creative Cloud, or you can save it to your computer and just click save and it's done. You can also change the name just like we did before. Now, all of these saves that we're that I'm showing you are all Photoshop 
It's called PSD document. If you want to open it into a program that is not Photoshop, this program, that program that you're trying to use, will have to be Photoshop, you know, like able to, to read that. Now, those are saves. I really, unless I don't, unless I want to save it as a Photoshop, that means I'm in the process of working on this, or is the final pro product, and then I want to save it, I will save it like that. Now, there is another option to save. It's called export. Right, so like right here you have a quick export. So there is a type of file that is called a uh, PNG. And you probably already know there is JPEG, there is all kinds of other files. We're going to see that when you, when you do that. So if you want to save it as a quick export, as a PNG, just click on that and then it will save. And I, I'm going to show you something they have. So quick export. This window is going to pop up. So it's going to tell me where do I want to save it. Now, normally, normally I save on a my desktop. And then from there, depending on what type of file it is, I might take it to a, I have several different hard drives in here. And each hard drive I have is for certain kinds of items. So I might save it on the desktop because I haven't decided what I want to do with this. But then I'll, once it's on the desktop, I take it to, you know, to a further, further place. Like those files that I was showing you before, there were files that I had on my desktop while I was doing the class. And then they were there because they were the quickest way to access them. I don't have to think of where are they. They're on my desktop right there staring at me. Uh, so I say, you know, I like to save them that way. Uh, so I can click, all right, save. And right there, it's telling me is a PNG and I'm saving it, what name and I'm saving it. Pretty much the same name that we have before. And I just click save and I know it's going to be on my desktop. I never click on any item and say save without knowing where that file is going to go. That's how you lose files, especially because I have like, like four different portable hard drives, two more hard drives inside my computer. That is six different locations and the locations are like huge. So I don't want to be chasing. All right, so another thing you can do is X4 app. Now, I haven't mentioned the shortcuts, but notice that there is a, if you press Alt, Shift, Control, W, you get this window. Now, this is the most awesome window. It's the one that is more, the most versatile when it comes to saving. When we were doing save as a PNG, we had a PNG version. When you were doing save, save as, save as a copy, all of them there were PSD document. And here you get a choice. Like if I don't want it as a PNG, then I can come over here to the format and I can say, well, I can save it as a JPEG. Or I can save it as a GIF or GIF. Some people call it, call it GIF. I call it GIF. Right. Now it also tells you the width of what this document is. Right now it's showing it at 66%. Uh, the canvas side is like this size, and you can say export. Now, you can export it with metadata. I'm not going to really go into the really deep into that. I can change the scale of it. Like right now, it will be a 1%. I can change it to like twice the size. I can change it to three times the size. I don't recommend you doing that unless you understand how this, you know, the size, uh, Photoshop is not gonna enlarge it and make it better unless you, you know, have done that. We're gonna talk more about that. All right, so you have all of these different options for you to do. So you can click S4 and that's it, it's done. All right, so that was Photoshop. So this is an introduction to Illustrator. So again, I'm going to be doing the same thing that I did for Photoshop. I have the Adobe Creative Cloud. 
I don't know if you have a different version of Illustrator, but for this, for the purposes of this class, I'm going to be talking about Illustrator using the uh, Creative Cloud uh, desktop. So when you open your sign in, so I have my name right there. So I'm sign in. The computer kind of knows who I am and what I'm doing here. So, so that is it. Pretty much the same way that you did Photoshop, you do Illustrator. Once I click on this AI Illustrator, you can click on it from here. I didn't show you this before, but you can click on it from the apps themselves. Same thing. Uh, now notice it is saying, this is why I didn't want to show you before. There is an update is available. And then normally it will display, if I have more than one version, it will display the version that I have. Like I have Premiere Pro 23.6 and 24.1 and 18.5, like I showed you before, and InDesign 19.1. So I can get it from there or I can get it from this window. So when I click on Illustrator, it will go to this which is called the home screen. So in here, I can switch from AI, you know, Adobe Illustrator to the workspace. I can go back to home by just clicking on the home screen and it will take me to this screen. Now, if I want to op if I want to do a new file, then I can select different versions of called preset. So I'm showing you four right here, HD, TV, preset, and there are several, several different versions of that. So I can say new file and make a selection or what kind of a file do I want. We're going to be talking more about those uh, when we are doing the second part of this recording. All right, then, so I can say open pretty much the same way you did Photoshop, and then you're going to select a file from your computer and then you're going to click open or you can say file from the tabs that I have over here and do the same thing open same as Photoshop uh, if you have worked on a previous file like I did you can open it like that one all right so this is a uh, Adobe stock portfolio uh, sample that I got uh, we actually going to be working on this towards the end of the class. We're going to work on this or several different other options that I have. Right now, I'm in a section that is called the workspace. When you remember what we just did in uh, Adobe Photoshop, that the workspace looks very similar. Uh, let me open the layers a little. Now, notice that I'm opening these layers because they were like really tiny over there. The same way I did Photoshop. I just grab it in there and I open it. I can make it as big as I want, or actually I can make it as big as the a panel lens itself. Like you can probably make it bigger, uh, but we're gonna talk more about that, not in this video. So I'm making it bigger. So now I see these are my layers, right? So I have one group, several things are attached to each other. This is a, this is not a real, real file. This is more like a sample. Normally an illustrator, especially if you have that many items, you will have more than just one layer. Uh, so notice it. whenever I was working in Photoshop, my layers kind of show in this window and illustrator they open to the side. Now, can I grab this and put it right here? Hmm. No. Oh, this is good. A detach. So what happens if you detach it like I just did? Then you can just grab it. You need to grab it from the top. And you see how this is turning blue? I can put it here. I can put it there. I didn't show you that for a Photoshop. But this, this is something that you can do in Photoshop also. Detach it, it's more like what happened. Now, if you don't know, or if you don't remember, you can always go to window and then 
go back to the workspace that, that you have. Like right now, I have painting. But I can reset my painting. So, well, let's say I got rid of my layers. Got rid of it by, by accident. I can come to the window just the same as before. And I can find my layers. All right, so notice they're right there. Now, because they were detached, they showed up detached. All right, so I have my layers back. Now, if you're not gonna use any brush, uh, any brushes or any strokes or anything, obviously you can get rid of this. You know, sometimes the limitation of how small you can make it is not, it's annoying because it doesn't let you make it like, like if I'm not gonna use it, I want it small. My biggest thing is right here. I wanna use my layers. So notice that I was seeing them on the side, now that I put them in here. Uh, they're basically displaying just the same way as they display in Photoshop. This section over here, that you have all these tools over here, it's called the Tools Panel. You can have it a double-sided, like a friend of mine likes. I don't like it, because when you do this, you're making your workspace smaller I don't want it you know I don't like it you can have it so I, I don't I don't know why I don't like it I like them going down like this so I have the these are all two sections right there on the left just pretty much the same as Photoshop right here on the top you have similar drop down menu so you have file open so if I want to open a file I can open it right here you saw it in the home page uh open same thing now there is an edit version that we did like whenever you want to undo certain things like i just moved this so i can undo it but i don't want it over there so i'm gonna move it back so this is why i like i like my workspace to show what i'm working on when i window opens i don't want it to be covering things now we're gonna talk more about you know workspaces and, and things like that, but not in this video. Hi, right. let me move myself out of the way. So, so you have this section over here, it's called the panel section. So you have the color panel. Now, if you want to add uh, another window over here, like gradients, all right. So, so I like to see the colors, the gradients, Anything that's related to colors, like uh, like patterns. Uh, so I might put it there, but because I'm not using any colors, uh, it's not showing anything there. I, but this is what you saw in Photoshop. Color, gradients, patterns. Uh, so you can have several different things. Obviously, if you're not using one, like that one, I'm not using transparency. I can just... Uh, get rid of it or i can get rid of it like this i can exit out you don't want to bother with the little windows you know sometimes the windows are, are annoying it doesn't they don't show you the whole thing so i have these panels over here uh like in in windows we have swatches uh, i don't want it at the end might want to have it at the, in the front and then you also have libraries in there like i uh, like i like to keep my illustrator almost exactly the same is my photoshop that way i don't have to be digging around for finding different things so notice that in photoshop i did not have this little arrows over here this makes some this makes this bigger or smaller bigger small right so i'm not using these brushes now i can keep them here or i can grab them and put them there so you have a way to make this workspace yours. Now, once you have something done, once you, you have created something, let me make it smaller. I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger so I can see the items. When you're working in Illustrator, sometimes the layer section is pretty big. You don't wanna have it there at the bottom. So you wanna have it, maybe something that you're not using, uh, so a little bit smaller, so right there, like I can make this, like go all the way down there, if it lets me, or I can put it over here. Actually, I like, 
I like to have them small, especially if I'm not using it. The layer section is usually pretty big. All right? So, so you have panel section, you have the drop down menus, and you have this uh, tool section. Pretty much, I think, is like pretty easy to keep them, you know, keep Illustrator and Photoshop in check because they're very similar. All right? So, this is the end of this video. And another video, I'm going to get into more details. Uh, if you want to explore ahead, once you click on it, you know, like hover on top of it, you're going to have like a little video in there that kind of showed you what the little section does. Sometimes it's a video, like this is just a little illustration, like a little animation. If you want to learn a little bit more, uh, I'm just going to click on a little bit more. Click on a little bit more. And this is what happens. It opens up. It opens up and it might have a video. Like this is not a video, but it, it's kind of telling you pretty much, you know, how and how to do certain things in there. They might even have related opening kind of thing. Like, so this is called a brush tool. So you have, uh, you can select this tool. There is Mac and uh, Windows commands. We haven't really talked about those, but we're going to be talking more about those in, uh, in the next lecture. All right. I will see you in the next video. Bye.